All right, folks, in today's video, we're going to take a look at this device, and it's made by a company called Mini Circuits. And this one says 15542, and I have no idea what that means. I'm assuming it's a model number. And there's some other numbers on here. It's my understanding that this device is rated from 10 to 2 gigahertz, so 10 megahertz to 2 gigahertz. And it's what we would call an RF splitter or combiner. Now, some people will call this a power divider. Some people call it a voltage divider. Some people will call it a power splitter. Um, any of those are probably okay, but I think the official name is RF splitter and combiner. And the way it works is, is that you have this port marked S, and that is an input port. And then it has two output ports. So it takes a signal and it splits it. We're going to open this thing up and see the innards, so you'll see what it looks like on the inside. But a use case for this might be a single antenna plugged in right here and two radios, and then you could listen to this thing. What I would not do is transmit into any of these with a radio um, because the power that would go through it into the other devices would probably cook the front ends of those devices. So it's probably not a good idea. The other thing that you could do is that you can feed two signals in here and you can combine them here. So you could do that with two antennas. In our case, we picked this device up because we want to inject two signals from uh, signal generators and feed them into a single radio. And we're going to test this device today to figure out what kind of calibrations and settings we would need in order to do that. So basically what I want to do is I want to put a signal in the S and I want to measure the output on one and two and see how much insertion loss we have. We're going to get at least 3 dB because we're splitting our signal when it comes into this source. 3 dB is half your power. So if we're going to take a signal, divide it by two, we get a half on either side. So it's going to be at least 3 dB. The other thing I want to do is I want to take a signal and I want to shoot it in here. And I want to see how much comes out to. So in the one, out to two. And what that allow me to do is see how much isolation I have between these two ports. Not really a big deal. I'm not really going to use it for that, but th this is to make sure that if I put a signal that's too strong in here, it's not going to come out here and do something bad. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a signal in the one, and then we are going to measure its output on S. Because if I take two signals and I feed them in these ports like I want and out here into the radio, I'm going to need to know what level to set my signals for here. And I need to know what my expected signal level is coming out of here because we're going to use that to test the front end of a radio. Okay, so what we have here is the device opened up and underneath the microscope. And there's a couple of different things I wanted to point out and or talk about. <clears throat> so you can see the SMA connectors on each side. And one of the first things I noticed was is this device right here that connects these two together. Now this is typically called like a Wilkinson combiner. And what I think I understand is, is that typically they use a resistor here to balance input across these two. So in the event that the signal was stronger on one side, the resistor might help out with a path of different resistance to spread the signal out equally. Now I'm not an expert at looking these things up and I can't really tell what colors <laughs> this stuff is. So I think it goes brown, black, green, red, blue. Um, but I'm not sure that that's a resistor. That might be something else. It might be an inductor. Uh, other thing I wanted to point out is that you can see these traces and they come up and they loop around and they do this to achieve a certain type of frequency uh, in combination with this, I'm going to call it a tank circuit. And what we have here is an inductor and it is a little teeny tiny toroid. <clears throat> you can see it's got a few turns in there and then there's another device here and it's labeled 2430. I'm not sure if that's a capacitor or a resistor. I know it's a surface mount device, but that's, that's about it. Um, so I didn't learn as much as I thought I would or hoped I would when I cracked this thing open. And then let's just take a quick look at the underside. And then you can see it uses the bottom of this PCB as the ground plane. Okay, so for the first test, we are going to use this tiny SA Ultra as a signal source. And so what you can see is right now it is set to off. Our frequency is set for 14652. That is the signal or frequency that we're going to use when we actually test a radio in a different video. Our level is negative 50 dBm. Uh, we don't have any modulation on, so we're just going to transmit a carrier. We're not sweeping, so there's nothing set there, and we're not using any external gain, so there's nothing there. Our output is going to be a sine wave. Let me go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. Okay, so what we have is our tiny SA signal generator is turned on and it's coming through and it is going into our device under test. 
it's going in port S. Coming out of port 1, we have signal going into our tiny SA with the big numbers. And I have a 50 ohm dummy load here giving us a 50 ohm impedance on port 2. And what we can see is we are negative 54.3 dBm. Our signal coming out of this one is negative 50 dBm. So that would tell me that we have negative 4.3 dBm of insertion loss. Some people would still say negative 4.3 dBm of gain. But in either event, what we're losing is 4.3 dB. Okay, so what we've done is we've switched everything around. Here's our device under test. I switched the dummy load and the tiny SA. And what you can see is negative 54.2. So this is 50. That would mean that we are getting negative 4.2 dB of loss, or you could say 4.2 dB of gain. But it was 4.3 and now 4.2. So that's a pretty consistent measurement. Okay, so now we are set up with our tiny SA going into port 1. And then we are measuring with this tiny SA coming out of S or the source. So this would be the reverse direction. And then we have our 50 ohm dummy load here on port two. We have 50 dBm, negative 50 dBm signal here. And what we're reading over here is negative 53.9. So what that's telling us is that we have 3.9 dB of loss. Now let's go ahead and reverse this and see what we get. Okay, I lied. We didn't reverse it. What I did is, is I just moved this from port S to port 2. And that way we're going to get our isolation between these two ports here. And we move the 50 ohm dummy load here. And we are at negative 50 here. And we are about negative 70.4. So that would mean that we have 20 dB, 20.4 dB of isolation between those two ports. Okay, now we are injecting our signal into 2, and we are measuring on S, and then here is our dummy load. And between 50 and negative 50 and negative 54.3, we have 4.3 dBm of loss. Now we have the tiny SA going into port 2, and we're measuring on port 1, so it's isolation this direction with the dummy load on S, and then we have negative 70.3, so that would be 20.3 dB of isolation. All right, and we just did all those fancy pants measurements with the tiny SA, but you could do it with an nano VNA, so I just wanted to show you what we have here is a log mag measurement, and it is what's called an S21 measurement. So we have a signal coming out of our S11 port going into the device here on port S, and then the signal is coming out on this port one with the dummy load here and it's coming into our nano VNA. And when we do this, I can take a look at this blue line and going across that. It's around negative 4.04 dBm, which is consistent with the measurements that we got with the tiny SA. So I'm not going to go through all the same measurements again with the nano VNA. I just wanted to show that you could do that with either of these devices. All right, so let's figure out what we saw. So I put together a quick table here, and it shows that we were testing with the Tiny SA Ultra, and we were testing at 14652 megahertz um, at negative 50 dBm. And I have a column for the source that tells us where the signal was starting, and then load is the port where the signal was measured. And then we have a loss measurement for each one of those. And the real thing that stands out is, is that when we were measuring from port 1 right here into our source, we are at around 3.9 dBm, which is about 0.3 dBm lower than the rest of the measurements that we were getting uh, through port 2 and then in through port S. And so I don't think it's a big deal. This device certainly will be, it passes the mark for me. I feel confident using it to test the radio. So look for that in an upcoming video. Um, then you can see your insertion loss across port 1 to 2 and 2 to 1, but uh, we're not really going to inject any strong signals in there, so we feel pretty good that we're going to be safe when we do this. Anyhow, that's really it. If uh, you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching.